Yo, what's going on snipers and welcome back to our Ottawa Centers franchise mode. So in last episode we had the draft and the resign stage. We didn't let go of too, of too many pieces at the resign stage. I think it was like Zach Smith and a couple of the other older guys. Uh, we do still have Bobby Ryan's contract to deal with for one more year. I'm probably just going to keep him around because why not? Um, but at free agency, we're going to pick up some decent pieces to help our team because our team is looking pretty decent, I think, at the moment, like for future wise, because I was kind of writing down like projected lines. Uh, so I asked you guys who we should sign in terms of free agents. Nobody replied, but I did find some good players that we could go after. So the first one I want to get is Tavo Teravainen for the second line left wing spot. Uh, he's only 26 years of age and he doesn't really want that much money. Uh, he wants a lot of term, but I am not going to give him a whole lot of term. I'm going to give him, let's see, two years, I think. Yeah, two years is probably good. And we'll give him a bit more than he wants, like $7 million. Because he could be a pretty decent point producer in terms of passing. So he'll play on the second line behind Brady to Chuck. So there you go. And then we're also going to be signing, who else did I want? I wanted Brendan Gallagher, but... Eh, you know what, I could still go after Gallagher too. So we're going to get Brendan Gallagher for the second line right wing spot behind Pekanov because I want Pekanov to play on the top line. And then Bobby Ryan's going to be playing third line because he's still listed as actually as a third line scoring forward. Gallagher, I'm going to only sign for one year though just because he's not a part of our future really and he's a little bit older than Teravainen is. So we're going to give him one year at six and a half. Man, eh, maybe a bit more than that. Let's go 6.6. .6. There you go. And then there was also one th uh, third line uh, left winger that I wanted to get. I just can't remember who. Oh, yeah, it was Andreas Johansson. As you can see, he's an 80 overall. Um, he was pretty good with the Leafs, I think. Yeah, he, he puts up decent numbers. So he's a pretty decent third line scoring forward. So we'll sign him for... Um, let's go one year as well at... Four and a half, yeah, just a million more since we have a lot of money anyways. Because I don't think I'm going to be signing any big defensemen this year because I would like to play our youngsters, but I don't know who we're going to be playing in the NHL and who not. Because um, currently at the moment, Shabbat and CC would be our top pairing. And then Bergman probably and like Cal Foot would be the second. And then it would be Cernak and Breezebaugh or Cernak and Rask or Cernak and Vishnevsky, depending if Vishnevsky grows a lot. And then we need two goalies, I think. Yeah, we need two goalies, I think. Right? I think we need goalies. Let me just check, because I don't remember, because it's been like a couple days again since I've recorded an episode. Um, so do we need goalies? I think we do, because I think I released Kincaid and Lyon, didn't I? Yeah, we need two goalies. That's our only thing that we need. And then hopefully we get all those pieces because I think we could potentially make the playoffs this year if we get those signings that I want. So goalie-wise, who was it that I wanted to go after? Oh, yes. Uh, Philip Grubauer and Jonas Corposalo. As you can see, Corposalo is an 83. Uh, Grubauer also looking like an 83 maybe because he, I don't think he's an 85. And they're both kind of young still. They're both 20, where does it say their age even? Oh, 27 and 29. So they're not that old either. So Corpus Allo I'll bring in for, uh, yeah, let's go with one year. Because I'm hoping Gustafson will be ready soon. So one year at, let's go five, or let's go with six. Yeah, we'll give him six because I want him. I don't want to lose the chance of getting him. And in Grubauer, we're going to give you one year as well. They're both starters, it's looking like, but it doesn't really matter. Because then they could split like, the ice time. And in Grubauer, one year at, let's go, $5 million. And I know it's a lot more than he actually wants, but I really want these guys to play with us. So, one year at $5 million. And then that's all the signings I am going to make for this offseason. If we could get them, hopefully we do. Because like I said, it will definitely help out our youngsters and all that stuff. I was debating signing Ovechkin for the top line, but I just didn't want to do that. So Grubauer has signed with us. Same with Johnson. Uh, Tara Vinen accepted. That's a big one. Corpus Allo as well. And Brendan Gallagher. So our team might actually make the playoffs this year. So let's see him to next season and see what our lines look like.
Okay guys, so we're going to have to sign some depth, uh, depth defensemen because the fact that um, currently Tommy Rask and Vishnevsky are both depth defenders, um, so we're going to send them probably back down to the minors so they could play at least one more year because there's a pretty decent AHL squad down there. So let's uh, sign it to depth uh, defensemen, or well, a depth defenseman, maybe in a depth forward, just so we have something at least if um, a player goes down. So let's go to free agents quickly, and then let's see, uh, Bouliou, he might be listed as a depth defender, oh, is he only wants 1 million, I don't know if he is though, eh, he could be our depth defenseman, regardless if he isn't, let's give him one year at 1 million dollars, and then who else do we want to get, everybody else is like minor leaguers. Yeah, we might just leave it like that. Yeah, let's just get Bouliou as a depth defender. And then let's advance a couple of days. Like, him to the preseason. McCutcheon is going to be playing in the AHL this year, which was our top pick uh, in the draft in the offseason. So there we got Bouliou. Let's go to Edit Lions. Go to Roster Moves. And send down Vizhnevsky and Rask. That way they could play like top minutes on the in the AHL instead of being scratches or depth players in the NHL. So there you go, send those guys down. And then we'll go to edit lines again. Because for some reason it backs out of the edit line screen, which is kind of annoying. Okay, so let's see, how do I want to set this up? Obviously like something like that. Yeah, I think that's how I wanted to go. So, to chuck with White and Pekanov and then Gallagher, Brown, and Teravine, and that's a pretty solid second line. Then Johnson with Dzingel and Ryan, and Aston Reese with Sissons and Ellie. Defensively, Chabot and CC, Cernak and Foot, and then Brisebois and Bergman. In terms of goaltending, Corpusalo and Grubauer, so. Not a bad team. I don't know how far we're going to get, but like I know our offense, of course, pretty deep. Our defense is a bit weak, and then our goaltending is solid. It's not the greatest. And then in the AHL, let's just make sure all of our good youngsters are playing. So Peyton Osgood obviously has to play over somebody like, yeah, over Morona for sure. Because I need Peyton Osgood to get to the NHL soon. So there you go. Let's give him actually a bit more ice time. And then center wise, holy crap, there's a lot of youngsters actually. Par Jensen, I think. Yeah, low elite. He's gonna have to play over yeah, over Reinhardt. Just cause I would like these guys to start growing. And I think Smirnov was another one as well, actually. I think I drafted him. Yeah, low elite as well, so Smirnov as well, you're jumping into the lineup. And then on the right side, uh oh Moronov actually is a right winger. And then we want to play Paul Bowl kind of. So, yeah, Randall, you could come out. And then goes Moronov. And then Bowl. Where do we play Bowl? Hmm. Oh, where Eric Selk is, maybe. Yeah, where Eric Selk is, we're going to play Bowl. So, there you go. And then defensively, we're going to have to make sure we put in Vizhnevsky and Rask. Sorry for showing you guys all this micromanaging. I just want you guys to see who is in the HL roster. So Ben Harper, you could get scratched. I don't care really about you. Um, McPherson. Oh, yeah, we didn't call it Bully yet. God damn it. And then Mason Brewer, or Mitchell Brewer, not Mason Brewer. Um, and Nisimov, I think, was a low lead, but I'm not 100% sure. Oh, damn, we have so much, like, defensive prospects, it seems like. So, Vishnevsky, you could go in here for a second, and we're going to move you all the way up to the top pairing instead. Let's put McPherson down. Holy crap, McCutcheon's actually looking like an 80. We're going to keep him down there until we find out for sure, and if he is ready, then we're going to call him up, and we're going to send, like, Bergman down. Because he might be NHL ready already because of um, the stats. Like, when I was looking at his draft stats... Remember, I was saying that his stats look pretty damn good. I think I'm going to find a good steal. Um, yeah, I'm just going to scratch an Isimov. We haven't used him anyway, so. And then Rask could play right here. So there you go. There is our lines for the AHL club. Sorry, that was a bit long. We're not going to do much simulation in this video. Maybe another two months or something. So let's uh, save this as well. 
We're going to only go like two weeks at a time just because I want to be able to see what McCutcheon is first so we could call him up if we need to or whatnot. Because if he is NHL ready, that would be pretty great. Because we drafted him at 12th overall, I think it was. So that would be a pretty decent steal. So let's get this preseason out of the way. We don't have any youngsters I want to play in the NHL during the preseason. Like I would play McCutcheon, but I want to give him like some chances to play in the AHL as well. So... We start off the preseason with a nice win over both Montreal and Toronto and Buffalo. Nice. But we lose to the Bruins. Can we beat Tampa Bay's prospect kind of guys? No, we can't. Can we beat Florida? No, we can't in the shootout. So it's looking like we're going to finish either 4-2-1 or 3-3-1. and And we are going to finish 4-2-1, and so not too bad of a preseason. Let's just... Um, See if we could find out anything about McCutcheon's overall down there in the minors. Yeah, because I really want to call him up if he's NHL already. Um, so HL, do we know if he's for sure an 80 yet? No, we don't. Okay, we'll just leave him there for this time being. And we'll go, like I said, two weeks. And then we'll see if he is actually good enough. Because we might have a really good top four defenseman for the future with that guy so let's go all the way up to yeah, let's go all the way up to the 24th and we're gonna see if McCutcheon is ready oh yeah, I didn't call up um, Bullyu I'll call him up as well at the same time so assign scout oh yeah I didn't assign scouts but eh, I'll just leave it for now because we're not gonna do much simulation in this video and then I'll, I, I'll sign some like off camera or something so we win our home opener in overtime against the New York Rangers, so good job, boys. Now we have a two-game road trip, and oh my god, already? Colton Sissons has been injured with an abdominal strain, so let's go to roster moves because we don't have depth. So we're going to have to call up... Um, Vish oh, Vishnevsky's actually looking at NHL ready now. 78. Yep, okay, we're going to have to call up Vishnevsky, I guess. Damn, I guess he actually was better than I thought. So we'll call him up. We're going to also call up Bullyu from the AHL. Where are you, Bullyu? 75. I don't think he's that bad. We're going to call him up. And we're going to go to edit lines. And we're going to put Vizneski on the top uh, six pairing. Instead of Bergman. Yeah, instead of Bergman. Because Bergman's the oldest out of all these defensemen, I think. So there you go. Um, and then... Oh, the center, yeah. Well, okay, I don't know who we're going to put in Sisson spot because we don't have the depth forward, really, so... Um, hmm, what can we do? Scratched. Um, do any of these guys have, for some reason, really good offensive categories? Or... Uh, I don't think Blues is actually 87. 80 for Bergman. Okay, so what we could do is put Aston Reese at center. And then we're going to put like Bergman on the wing. As weird as it sounds, it's just because we don't have enough forwards. And I don't want to call anybody from the AHL up at the moment. So we'll leave it like that. And then in terms of this... Now that we called up a defenseman, we're going to have to put in another defender. So, um, Brewer, I guess you could go in. But we're going to put you all the way down to here. And put this like that. Okay, so there you go. Hopefully that assistance injury doesn't last too long. So we beat the Ducks 3-0, but then we lose 7-2 to, to the Oilers. And damn, the youngster has already been injured with an injured back in the AHL. Hopefully he's not a fragile guy, because I don't want a guy that just like gets injured night in and night out. So we're off to a pretty good start offensively, as you can see we're scoring a decent amount of goals, playing solid in our defensive end as well. So let's, uh, that's not for the draft class yet, I'll do that afterwards. Um, no, I do not want to give up Grubauer yet, thanks though Toronto. Um, so Belleville has multiple players eligible to be dressed. I'm surprised McCutcheon got injured so quick. Like, that was literally, I think, his first AHL game and he got injured. Hopefully he is NHL ready because then I would call him up. Or I might do that in next episode if he's ready. So, 
No, thank you. I don't need any depth defenders and stuff like that, really. I already have my own game against Tampa Bay. Can we beat the Tampa Bay Lightning? No, we do not. So we are 5-3 at the 24th. Let's see if we can find out McCutcheon's overall yet. Because we want to make sure that he is NHL ready before calling him up. And holy crap, Thomas Chabot's over a point per game. Playing like he is in real life, kind of. Um, so Plakanov up to an 86 actually, so that's really good to see him growing. And to Chuck is an 87, and I think he's on the last year of his contract. Oh no, he wasn't. He was last year. Yeah, because we gave him an extension. Chabot's also an 87 now. That's good news. Let's see the AHL quickly. Yeah, we still don't know if McCutcheon's ready, so we're going to leave him down there still for a bit longer. Just to find out his overall and whatnot. So let's go another two weeks, I think. Yeah, let's go another two weeks, maybe. Um, so let's go all the way up to the 7th. Uh, no, let's go to the 14th. Go an extra week. Because I want to get a decent portion of the season done. Like, next episode is probably going to be finishing up this season. So I want to make sure we have at least some of this done uh, for that event. So, Grubauer for Pissick in a third. No, thank you. I do not want to give up Grubauer at the moment. Because he's a pretty solid backup. Uh, fajamo has been injured. Let's go replace player. And Sissons is fully healed, which is great. Because now I don't have to play Bergman as a forward. But he did have four points, and he wasn't a minus player, so not too bad playing Bergman as a forward for some reason. So there you go, Sissons. I don't know why he dropped to a 78. It's weird, because he's only 27, and he should be getting his ice time that he likes. So Game against St. Louis is another win, so we're playing pretty de damn decently so far. Uh, McPherson is available, but he was never injured, so I, at least I never saw that dialog box appear, so... Colin White was never injured as well. But yeah, we're playing pretty good. I think those signings definitely helped us out. And oh my god, no. Our top defenseman, Thomas Chabot, has been injured to December the 7th. Will you stop losing morale because of ice time? You're going to be replacing Chabot on the top pairing. Yeah, 75. I don't think he's a 75, but uh, it's kind of annoying when depth players like don't like their ice time and stuff like that. It's like you're listed as a dev forward. Yeah, that's your role is to just play when people get injured and whatnot. So, Blue, we're going to put his extra attacker as well, even though he's not the greatest. So, we lose to the Flyers. Can we beat the San Jose Sharks? Yes, we do in a shootout. Nice. Yeah, I think those signings were really good, like, complimentary pieces for our youngsters at the moment, it seems like. Game against the Capitals and then the Islanders. I think we're going to try and just wrap up this month. So Fajimo is back. I don't know if he had really good potential even, but we'll put him back in anyways. So Peyton Osgood is actually a 69, so he might be closer to getting ready for the NHL like by like two seasons maybe. So we lose to the Caps, but we beat the Islanders, so we are 10-6-1 so far. Um, let's just take a look at McCutcheon again. Because I don't want him playing in a hit, like not in his role and whatnot. So hopefully he's NHL ready. If he's not, it's okay though, because he will be next year. So he's a 77. So he's a top two def like defender in the AHL. And Rask is now ready for the NHL. Looks like yes, he is. Um, I'm gonna leave that for next episode to call him up, just because. Right now, I'm kind of short for time, and I want to just get the end of this month done. And then we'll take a look at our player stats and um, who's on the trading block and all that stuff. So, let's go to the first. But yeah, I'll call up Rask definitely for next episode. And then, I don't know who else we're going to call up. If anybody else grows, meanwhile, we might have to call them up. So, we might have to actually make some trades on the defensive front just to make room for certain players like Rask and whatnot. And we're now on a three-game losing streak, so we're 10-8-2, so we're a bit, like, struggling lately. Can we beat the Florida Panthers, though? And Drake Batherson has been injured. Don't really care about him because he's not going to make their team. And we lose another game, so that's four losses in a row. Uh, no, thank you. I don't need Joachim Ryan again. Game against the Devils. We win 5-2, to two, but then we lose to Montreal. And our last game of the month against the New York Rangers. Oh my god. Really, Bully, you're going to go down with post-concussion syndrome? 
I signed you as a depth forward, like, or depth defenseman. What the hell are you doing? And we beat the Rangers. Let's, and let's just leave the thing for Batherson for now. So we are 12-10-2 here at December the 1st. So not too bad, just 500 pretty much. Let's take a look at our player stats uh, so far for the season. And then I am going to show you guys the trading block in case there's any trades you think we should do. So Tuchuk leading the way with 21 points in 24 games. Pukhanov's got 18 points in 24 games. That's great. Gallagher is also helping out on that second line. Dezingle, Terrifying as well. Uh, Johnson, White, Chabot. Damn, Chabot was over a point per game before his injury and he was a plus 11. So he like definitely is a huge loss. Hopefully he comes back pretty soon. Um, everybody else actually is playing pretty decent. Like even Ellie and Aston Reese on that fourth line. Is out playing Bobby Ryan on that third line. Like Bobby Ryan is just not much of a producer anymore. Um, so there is all the player stats. Let's take a look at our goalies. How are they doing? So they're playing around the exact same. Actually, both have 3.02 goals against average and 904, 903 save percentages. Um, did any get assists? No. Okay, so not too bad. Um, how about in the AHL? How is our players played down there? Any good prospects playing pretty decent. So Osgood's got 12 points in 17 games. I guess Philip Sopic is playing down there. We could technically use him as a depth four, but I'll keep him down there. Uh, McCutcheon, our defenseman that we drafted this year, who's at a 77, he's got nine points in 16 games. Kaliev's got nine points. He was one of our first rounders, I think. Yeah, he was a first rounder in our first year. He's just taking a bit of time to grow. Rask has six points. McPherson, who was a seventh round pick in the last draft, has five points. Smirnov has five points. Jansen, five points. Honka, four points. Is Honka growing? Yes, he is. Okay. So that's pretty decent. How about goalies? Um, Gustafson and Fowler. Not Oh, Fowler's playing actually pretty good to an extent. Just not getting the wins. And Gustafson's still playing really bad. But he is getting really close to being an NHL starting goaltender, or backup goaltender at least. So pretty good growth, I guess, and pretty good production from our young guys. Um, so I think the last thing we'll do is just check the trading block, just in case there is any moves you guys think we should make, because I don't know if there is really one that we can make at the moment. Like, we might have to trade away a defenseman so we could put Rask in the lineup or something. So Jack Campbell on the block, Dubnik and Harabic, Kirkonovic or whatever it is, um, Okpozo, Shiri, and McQuaid. Sorry about that. So Elliot and Delandria, Almark and Bear, Gardner and Taze and Seabrook, so a lot of veterans still, Landeskog, Soderberg, and Andergetto, uh, Para and Dennis, uh, Turkey. Kreider, DeKaiser, and Strollman, Lundin, Kovalev, um, Tutin, and Noel, Muzzin, and Brown. Yeah, there doesn't seem to be that much. Riley, Olsner, and Weidman, Rene, Lad, and Komarov, Butchnevich. Uh, Butchnevich isn't that bad. He'd be a pretty decent piece to like replace like Bobby Ryan eventually. Because he's only 26 years of age. But he's more of a defensive minded forward it looks like. But he's still not that bad. Hmm. That's kind of interesting. Um, Ulet and Alexiak and Edler. Krejci, Parise, Nason. Volchenkov and Paul, uh, Paul Mary, Blanchard. Shlomko, Davidson and Ferk. Gonchar and Kairou. Ernie. Osala. Hyman, Bogosian, Han, Lee Tanev, and Bacchus, Nyquist, Pajot, and Tatar, and Niskanen, and Poichuk, and Bufflin, Forbert, and Kempney. So if you guys see anything that we should sign for our team at all, let me know down below in the comments. Otherwise, that is going to do it for this episode of our Auto Center's Franchise Mode. So next episode, we will get the rest of the season done with. And hopefully we make the playoffs. Because I think this team could be capable of making the playoffs. Just based on how good our youngsters are producing. And in those signings we made. Hopefully those help us out this season. So thank you guys so much for watching. And I'll see you guys next time.